Hello YouTube. Today I'm going to be showing you a little bit about the GPIO pins on the Beagle board. Now I will be doing this over kernel 3.8 seeing as how most people did it on another kernel which needed a lot more work but it's a lot easier for GPIO pins. Keep in mind that if you want to use something else such as PWM or I squared C it's going to need more work at the end so Today, I'm only going to show you GPIO pins and the fact that they're now hardware files that you can access and echo information into. I'll be talking about input, output, the max current voltages, and the fact that you need a transistor, how to calculate which pin number is which for the GPIO. There is some multiplication and addition required to calculate the exact GPIO pin you're going to be using. Okay, so the first thing I would like to point out is that I am running Ubuntu 13.04, I believe, on this BeagleBone. And that being said, we have to SSH into it, or you can use the HDMI with the keyboard and mouse to use the terminal. So, I'm going to go ahead and SSH into it. For, and uh, If you're using it over USB, it's going to be... Oops, I keep mistyping. It's a little hard to type in such a tight area. Well, the IP address is going to be 192.168.7.2. And just type in your password if it prompts you that you need to verify that you want to add this to your wow, your SSH allowed people, I guess. I don't know if I keep forgetting what it's called. Just go ahead and say yes. So let's go ahead and get straight to the hardware files. What you're going to want to do is log in as root. So sudo dash i if you're on Ubuntu or Ubuntu, whatever you guys want to call it. I don't know the exact name. Somebody comments it. And that puts you in as root. So you can change directory to the root. Oops. Oops. Oh, come on. What the heck did I do that for? So you're going to want to change directories into the root and go straight to cd sys class gpio and we'll, we'll stop there so we'll list that directory and you can see these are the gpio chips so let me show you guys this pdf i have really quick this PDF is from a guy called Derek Malloy go to his website he has a lot of information on this beagle bone so it's, it's a blog and it, I, I learned most of my stuff from him just he hasn't done a video on this GPIOs with the new device trees so I thought I'd make it simple for those that are in a rush this chart right here that he made gives you the header pins so header pin 1 is right here in the corner the very very first one you can see it says 1 on the corner you can't see it on the camera but it's there and then it goes 1 2 3 4 5 6 and so on and so forth right let's say you wanted to use GPIO 1 28 here what you would do is you would multiply 32 by this 1 whichever number is right here so if it was zero it'd be zero in the case it's one so 32 plus 28 and the number that this comes out to would be 60 he's already done the math for you as you can tell so let's go ahead and get to it so this is going to be pin 12 on this header it would be one two three four five six this top one right here so we'll go ahead and test that right now so let's go ahead and I like this so I'll know. Let's go to the Beagle board. Now, right here, if you want to activate this pin, so you can use it on the <clears throat> so you can use it on the Beagle Bone, what you're gonna do is you're gonna X echo for the GPIO number, which in this case was 60. You're gonna echo that whoa, to export and what this does if we relist the directory there's a new item in that list it's called GPIO 60 so let's change directories to GPIO 60 
Let me clear the screen really quick. Okay, so you see GPIO 60. Now we clear in the list. You have an active low, a direction, and a value. If we if we check the direction, this cat direction, you could see it's an input. If you wanted to make this an output, you would simply echo out to direction. And you have now created an output. Okay, so the max currents, which Derek Malloy has actually stated here, 4 to 6 milliamps on output and 8 milliamps on input. So keep that in mind whenever you're working with this Beagle board. You go over that, you risk burning the board. Also keep in mind that these two are the these two are grounds. One of these two is 3.3 .3 and the other one is a 5 volt source. And in both of those, you do have a maximum current. Let's go ahead and check the value. You can see right now we have it set to zero. So let me set up a quick circuit so you guys can see when I activate it, what will happen. When I deactivate it, what will happen. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and echo a value of 1 to activate. Whoops, not V. A value of 1 to activate the, <coughs> the pin. So I'm going to echo that to value. And that set the pin to high. So if I go ahead and test this. You can see we should be able to get 3.3 .3 volts. Oh, spot on. That was perfect. Now, if I go ahead and leave those pins there and I echo a value of zero, it turns it off. So, right there. As you can tell, there's no current. And that's how you would program a GPIO. Now, let's say you wanted to use it as an input. You got to be a little more careful with the input because you got to watch current values. Now, since we're using a multimeter, we didn't have to include any resistors, but do keep in mind that if you exceed the 4 milliamp current source, it's going to it's going to damage the board or you'll just turn it off and you have to wait for it to reset. Okay, so when you want to create an input circuit, you're going to need to make sure you have a resistor. In this case, I have a 1.5k resistor which brings the total current down below the 8 milliamp limit so the circuit is built and in this case let's go ahead and start on the computer so let's start by echoing in which stands for input to direction now if we cat that you're gonna see that direction should now be an input as expected so the next step is to cat value to see its current value. So right now that nothing is connected, you can see that we're getting a 1. Why is that? This is because this GPIO pin is programmed to be a pull up configuration. So that means that when there's nothing connected, you're going to get a positive voltage of 3.3 .3 volts. So to keep that in mind, in order to complete a circuit, you need a positive and a negative. So, seeing as how this pin is in pull-up configuration mode, you're always going to get a positive 3.3 uh, 3 volts. So, what you're going to have to do to complete the circuit is get a negative connected to the ground or the reference. In this case, is 0 volts or just ground. By doing that, you'll see that you, you, you can complete the circuit now. If we connect this to the 12, pin 12, we'll have the ground, the circuit, and the 3.3 .3 volts from the pin 12. And that on the computer, when you connect to the ground, is going to sync it. And that being said, you will get a zero. So, 1, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12.
And now if we cat the value, you'll see that we have a zero. So let's say you didn't want a zero, you want it a one whenever you activate the switch, which in this case is just a direct connecting wire. Well, in order to fix this, you would need to echo a one to active low. Now by doing that, we have the circuit disconnected right now. If we cat value, you'll see that it's now a zero. It flips it. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Now when we connect it, we should get a one. Don't confuse this for pull up and pull down configuration. This is not what this is. This pin is going always going to be in pull up configuration unless you specifically go into the system and change that, which we will get into in another video. But for now, just know that each pin is going to be different. Some may have a pull up and some may have a pull down. In this case, pin 12 on the P9 header was a pull up configuration. So that's it for GPIOs. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments. Um, if you guys also, something I would like to add, you may need to be using transistors. I went ahead and just went to Radio Shack and bought this overpriced transistor because, I mean, you guys know Radio Shack is overpriced, but they have everything on hand. So keep using transistors, and later on in my next video, I will show you guys exactly how to connect the transistor to your beagle bone or, more better said, your breadboard. So. Like I said, like my video if you liked it, subscribe if you want more, and thanks for watching.